Next stop, Hog Road, Manhattan. Next stop, J and Sand Street. Next stop, 42nd and Queen, Lake Harriet. Next stop, Lake and Hennepin. Next stop, 9th Street. The next stop will be 15th Street. We're at the uh, other end of the layout. The three cars are ready to go. I'm going to walk up and push the start button. Now the gray car is coming down the main line on the left. And up at the end of the straightaway where that gray car is headed is a Z-stuff detector. And it's got a green light right now. You may be able to see that green light change to red when that car goes in front of the detector. That's an infrared detector and it closes it by Z-stuff and it closes a relay. And that's what signals a controller to uh, start the other car. You can't see it from here, but the... Uh, the other two cars moved up, and this green one's now out, now out, now out on the main line. Each, each of the three cars takes turns running around the layout once. Now that car is almost at the detector. The detector's going... The detector went to red. It starts the other car. There now the yellow car, which is a, the last of the three, is coming down the main line on the left side of the table. Now that's the third and final car, and what I call the repeat switch is not closed, which means when that third car finishes the, its trip, that will be the end of the cycle, and all three cars will sit and wait until somebody pushes the button again. There goes the detector to red. Well, that car, that yellow car will pull up into the tunnel. The green one's hidden behind the building, and you can see maybe on the left side of the table, the gray one's sitting over there waiting to go again. Here's the uh, control unit. This is a different control unit as shown in the first, first part of the video. The, uh, some of the toggle switches used to control inputs have been replaced by these Atlas slide switches which are a little easier to wire up but it does basically the same function and we've got a uh, uh, a uh, the company that makes tortoises make this thing called a schmail which is basically a tortoise with a DCC decoder built into it and that has a relay built into it that operates a signal light you can see where I'm pointing there's a green light and if I push the start button That'll change them to that light will change to red. Now the cars just started up and that went red. That light will stay red until they all three complete a cycle. And that that when that goes back to green, that tells people they can push the button again to run the cars. But the red light indicates that the system is busy. There's the gray car, the first car coming up the, the main line. That's headed for the Z-stuff detector. Let's see how the detector changed to red. And the, what's the front car is now the green car. It takes off. The yellow car pulled up. And the gray car pulled into the tunnel. Now we got the same thing repeating. There's our green car coming around the far end of the layout. coming down the main line toward the Z-stuff detector.
Now I turned off the horn and turned on the station stop feature, so. Next stop, Franklin Avenue. Instead of blowing the horn, it stops and goes through its uh, loading routine. So we have the option using our toggle switches of having the uh, cars blow their horn over there or stop and make a uh, announcement stop or we can have them do none of, none of the above just depending on which toggle switches we use. Now that's the final car so it's about ready to go across the detector and you can see the, that car moves up into the tunnel and everything stops and then that status light change back to green and that everything will sit there the way it is uh, until somebody comes along and pushes the button again and then that, that button will start things up and it'll do another cycle. The six minutes of video you just watched shows the three MTH PCC cars operating at the November 2022 Toy Train Expo event in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. The, re the remainder of this video that follows was recorded earlier in March 2022 and shows a more in-depth demonstration of the same system on a smaller 8-foot long table. Note this recorded earlier March 2022 demonstration used an earlier version of the control panel, but it does the same thing. In March, we used the NCE power cab because my Prower Pro command station was packed away, but you really need to use the larger NCE power pro system for running three cars. The NCE company makes both the programmable controller and the DCC system that we're using. Hello, I'm James Ingram. I'm gonna we've got our familiar push button here to start the trains, in this case PCC cars. Notice the status light here is green. When we push this button, it changes to red and they'll start up. What you're, what you're seeing is three MTH O-gauge PCC cars, which are Proto 3, which means they can run on DCC. And what we're doing here, you can see we got three of them on the same loop. Our Midwest Traction Hub claim is that we're transforming O-Gauge streetcar operation. And maybe you think that's too pompous, but we've been able to make it a little interesting. Instead of just running one, like you usually see, we can run three. And we can actually have these also blow their horns or make an intermediate station stop or make an intermediate station stop and do their announcement so we've got several other options which we'll demonstrate shortly now this is running a single cycle so when that last car crosses the uh, crosses in front of the detector they'll all stop and the idea this could be a public display with that push button out front and the kids or adults can come along and push that button it'll run them through a, a cycle and then they'll they'll finish and they'll stop and they'll wait till somebody pushes the button again so let's start them up again And I'm going to close what we call the repeat switch, which keeps them going.
and if you notice the logic here it's not too complicated we have two cars in the yard the area back back in the rear we're calling the yard you can see the sign on the wall maybe behind the uh, yellow car it says yard but when the car crosses in front of the detector it slows its speed down uh, in this case from speed 4 on the main line to speed 3 on the yard and then it starts the forward car up which was the the uh, green car there and the middle car which was the yellow one it moves that forward for five seconds now when that green one crosses in front of the detector it'll start the front one up which is a yellow one the gray one which is the middle one it'll move that forward for five seconds to get it out of the way so that's that's our most basic operation uh, three cars. Now let's, let's open that repeat switch. Now you can see again they came to a stop and I should have pointed out earlier but maybe you can see the status light which is back here. That status light went to green and that I I can tell the kids or whoever's running this, you can push the button when the status light is green, but when the status light is red, that means the system is busy. So again, if I push the button, you can change that, see that change back to red, and it doesn't do any good to push the button until that status light changes back to green. start these cars up again uh, and I've got the repeat switch closed which means they'll keep running and our notice our status light is green so when I push this button don't get off at the next stop the status light changed to red and they start to operate now this is what you just saw a minute ago but I'm gonna go over there and turn on I'm gonna flip the toggle switch for the horn So the next time they get in this vicinity, they'll blow the horn for two seconds. <laughs> Notice the first time around, like, you can see the yellow and the headlights not on yet, but when it sends the blow the horn command, it also turns the headlight on. And once those lights are on, they'll they'll all stay on as long as we're operating. Now we'll turn off the uh, turn off the horn button, but we'll turn on the station stop button. So instead of blowing the horn when they get in that same vicinity, there's a certain amount of time delay to get them out here. When they get to that point, it'll, they'll make a five-second station stop. That's about a seven and a half second delay to get them from where they're uh, starting back there out to this front point here. Of course, that, that delay would depend on the size of your layout, but it's about seven and a half seconds for the, this layout. This is basically on one of those uh, 30 inch wide by eight foot long conference tables. I've got some pieces of wood to make it just a little bit wider than the 30 inch because the uh, track I think is 031 or 032 so I, I needed just a little bit more width but you can see they're all making they're all making a station stop now what we can do additionally to that 
is turn on the announcement and we'll do that next. Now when the cars make that station stop, they should go through their announcement cycle. See, it takes them a minute or a little bit longer to go through the announcement cycle, but they eventually start up again. Next up, 42nd and Queen, Lake Harriet. announcements uh, and say turn off the station stop and they'll just go back to their normal operation without the uh, without the stop and without the announcements and likewise we can turn the uh, horn back on so ne next time a car goes through there uh, it should blow the horn again. And I'll, I'll open the repeat switch. The gray car, I know the gray car is the front car, so since I opened the repeat switch when that yellow one pulls in everything will stop you can see back there the uh, status light went back to green and again the cars will sit and wait there until somebody pushes the button again we used that same method of running three trains back in July of 2020 was video 827. You can see here we it, it's actually on the same table as we're using for this video, but uh, we have three engaged trains on the line and there's a single detector over here. And if you watch when that train comes past the detector, the front train takes off, the rear one moves up 
in the yard and stops. Now this is the middle train. Watch when it crosses the detector. This one will move up to the front of the yard and the one that came in will park in the back of the yard. So it's the same principle we're using with these street cars, uh, except we're using trains. Of course, when you got trains, you need a little, a little more track. Uh, but that's that's the same principle we're using for the street cars. Now we can run two cars also. I'm going to pull this car off the track and put it up there. You see they got a fairly large capacitor around them. Lights stay on for a minute. Now I've got just these two cars on and that's, that's car uh, 1003. I'm going to close a switch for that car so I've got there's a switch for each of the three cars so I'm just going to use the switches uh, for the two cars are on the track but I I opened I should say opened the switch for this car since it's not on the layout now if we push the start button again we should get a similar operation but we just got two cars on the track this is a car for the loop only And we can turn on the, the horn and as before. I think I missed that car, but the horn should go on for the next car. Okay, the repeat switch is open. It did one cycle. We'll close the repeat switch and we'll restart them. Notice the status light's red. The uh, status light is green. That means any person from the public can walk up to this public push button and start them up. And likewise, we can have our announcement same as before I opened the horn button which means it won't blow when I close the button for the station stop and the announcement so that yellow car when it gets up here should do its announcement cycle same as it did before Now notice since there's only two cars on the track, they stop a little bit further back than they did when there was three cars on the track.
Now I turned, I, I opened the announcement switch, which means they won't announce anymore. And I also opened the repeat switch. So uh, once the uh, gray car gets out in front, they'll, they'll come to a stop again and wait till now it's going to do the, uh, just doing a plain station stop there, I believe. Yeah, I turned off the announcement switch, but I left the, left the station stop switch closed. Now when the yellow car goes back and crosses the detector, there'll be a five second delay to move that uh, gray car forward, but then when the uh, time's out, everything will stop. Now they're they're sitting there and they again they would wait until somebody pushed the button to push them to start them up again. Now we'll do the same thing with just a single car. I'm going to pull the uh, gray car off the track and put it up here on the siding. And I'll close the switch for the gray. I'll open the switch for the gray car. So the only car that we're telling to run is the yellow one, which is number 420. So when I push this button, and I'll turn the uh, announcements back on. Now the yellow car is out there running by itself. Next stop, Franklin Avenue. Heat switch uh, is open, which means when that completes a cycle, it'll go back into the yard and park and wait. And again, that single car, that'll sit there and wait for however long it takes, 10 minutes, an hour, whatever, until a person uh, when the public comes along and pushes the button and it'll start it up again and it'll repeat its sequence. Next stop, Eighth and Hennepin. Now we're looking a little closer to our uh, control board which is over here and basically this is the what they call the mini panel is its official name. I call it a DCC programmable model train controller because that's what we can use it for like you're seeing in this video. Um, and this is this is this push button number one that just parallels the one you saw me pushing earlier. If we don't have the public put push button hooked up we can start everything by pushing this button that does the same the same thing. Uh, and this this control board is from the previous video 833 where we ran the two Chuggington analog locos. So we're not using everything on this board. Uh, there are two relays here and here. These two relays were used to control the Chuggingtons which are uh, analog locos but we're not using the relays for this video. There's what they call an NCE dual relay. One half controlled the turnouts that ran the two Chuggingtons in the siding we're not using that half. We are using the one side of it here to control the status light. Change that from red to green. And you may say, well, there's a heck of a lot of wires on that board. It's mainly just my sloppy wiring hooking up toggle switches. It probably could be done much neater. If you look at this one here, which is a, a bare board, you see here's the, the mini panel, the controller, and here's the this is the hookup for the power cab. So it's it's pretty simple when you take away all the uh, extra wires and stuff. And what what I'm using is an NCE DCC power cab. That's back here. That's supplying the power. 
if, if you're from the MTH-DCS world, this is the equivalent of the TIU, the track interface unit. And NCE says not to use the power cab on O-gauge because it's too small. Uh, so I'm, I'm doing what they don't recommend. And it actually is a problem here because when you put these cars on the track, they, the capacitors charge up and they draw more current. So I actually have to put two cars on let them charge up, then put the third car on very carefully without shorting anything and let that one charge up. If I try to start all three cars, the, the three capacitors charging overloads my power cab. So definitely should be using a what they call a powerhouse, which is the 5 amp or, uh, well actually they want you to use the 10 amp system for O gauge. And let's take a closer look at the mini panel itself. There's a little red LED there and that'll blink when I push this reset button. I don't, I'm hoping it shows up on the camera. There should be a, a, a red LED blinking when I push the reset button. The reset button you don't use in normal operation, but if you have a problem or you're working on routines and you need to stop the thing from executing, uh, the reset button forces it to stop operating. And what what we can do with no cars on the uh, on the system? Open these things. If we push the start button, and I'll use this one here, you can see how that lights blinking about twice per second, and that that's that light blinks when it sends commands. So it, it's it's going through the routine. There's no cars on the track, so it's not operating any cars, but it's cycling through the routine. Uh, at a rate of about uh, twice per second and blinking that light. And notice the status light is red. Now if I open the repeat switch, let's see here. If I open the repeat switch, you notice it stopped blinking and the status light over there went back to green. And again, if I close the repeat switch, push the start button, you can see the status light went to red and it's blinking. If there was a car on there and we had the switches closed for that particular car or combination of cars, then it would operate the cars like you saw previously. But like I say, it's just cycling through at the moment. And again, if we uh, open the repeat switch, you can see it stops and the status light goes back to green. Let's talk about the uh, detector for a minute. That's sitting over here. And what this is is a Z-Stuff DZ1012 infrared block signal detector. And back here is a Z-Stuff DZ1008 uh, single pole double throw relay. And this is, it's wired up to the normally open contacts of this relay. So when this light is green, which is the way it is most of the time when there's no car blocking it. These contacts are open, but when a, a car, a PCC car, goes in front, it uh, you can see the detector detects the car, or in this case my hand, and changes it to red. And you can see it goes back to green once the car passes. But when that changes to red, this relay closes, and that's connected to, I think, input 14 on the on the controller, the mini panel, and that's how the mini panel knows that the car went past the detector. And you can also use uh, magnets on the bottom of the car with reed switches in the track, or you could use an electric eye, or you could use an Aza Tracks uh, infrared detector, or some other brand of infrared detector. I've just got a couple of these Z-Stuffs systems I made, and I can wire it so the whole thing is together. And it's nice because it's basically portable. You can see it's not connected to the track. I can pick it up and move it around and put it wherever it's needed and not have to disturb the track at all. So it's handy in that respect. Now let's look a, a way of testing the detector. If we start this back up uh, blinking like we did before, I'm going to push the start button. And again, maybe you can see the uh, red LED is blinking at a half half a, a it's blinking twice per second. I'm going to say a half second interval is what it is. And what we can do if we put our hand in front of the detector, you can see how that light's still 
still blinking over there, but now it's blinking a lot slower, and that's a way we can test the detector. And we don't even have to have a separate switch for it. If you watch, if you've seen any of the previous videos, we had a detector test with a separate switch, and I found with this, at least for this type of routine, I can bake it, bake it right into the the program, so to speak, that uh, we can test the detector without having a separate switch. You can see how it goes back to blinking fast when it's green. Again, if I put my hand in front of it and block it to red, you can see that red light blinks, but it slowed down a lot. So that's our detector test. Let's take a closer look at these street cars. What we got here is, a, I believe, a Proto Sound 1 Brill car and a Proto Sound 1 PCC car and then a Proto Sound 3 uh, PCC car on the right. And this yellow one's the one we've been seeing in the video a few minutes ago. But this is an interesting design. In all cases, they have the front axle only is powered. The front, the front of these cars is up here. This one axle in the front is powered and then the other three axles are just free. So basically you've got this car being pulled along by just a single axle with traction tires on it. This contrasts to like the uh, Williams Bachman O-Gage uh, Peter Witt cars. I've seen those and they have all, all eight wheels powered and I know at least two of them have traction tires so com completely different arrangement. Uh, but anyways you can see uh, this these have a uh, this one has nothing back in this slot. It says on off on this Proto Sound 1 car and on the uh, the early cars that were prior to Proto Sound 1. Like this is a this is I think the first PCC they made this gray septa, uh, gold septa car but this has a on off switch. There's an actual switch there but then that switch went away with I believe Proto Sound 1. You, you'd program the thing uh, using, using your MTH contr controller and then when the Proto Sound 3's came out like this yellow one there's a, uh, there's a there's a slot there that comes empty when I bought the car but it says DCS on the left and DCC on the right and uh, somebody has added the switch for me on this one so that I can throw that switch to the right and run it on DCC and the, the MTH manuals say they won't run if the switches are in the wrong position, they won't run. Uh, but I found by accident, by accident meaning I forgot to throw the switch, that I can actually run this thing uh, on DCC when the switch is in the DCS position, although it pulls a little more current. But that's something i got to investigate more. Um, and you can see one other design change on this Proto 1 car. This, the holes for the speaker are up in the uh, front on this Proto 1 car, whereas the Proto 3 car, those holes have been apparently moved back to the rear for whatever reason. And you, you probably know the story about these uh, Proto 1, Proto 3 stuff. All the all the MTH locos made since 2011 are Proto 3, pretty much, except the bump and go trolleys. Uh, and the Proto 3 cars made between 2011 and 2014 actually had this DCS DCC switch like you're seeing here and I assume that was true for the street cars also so if you found a PCC car that was made in that time span 2011 to 2014 it's probably got that switch otherwise it just comes with a empty hole there and you have to add the switch like was done for this one uh, in other words in 2014 the switch was removed from all the Rail King locos and street cars but all the premier locos have the switch to this day so uh, that's basically the story on those on the uh, DCC switch now you can see I've got uh, four PCCs and one Brill car sitting up on the shelf and these are either Proto Sound or uh, predecessors to that just plain AC cars uh, we can't run those on DC but conceivably we could do the same thing that the HO folks and the S gauge folks do uh, with an older logo is add a decoder to it and as I understand it soundtracks and uh, ESU Loc Sound and TCS all three of those companies make sound decoders for street cars so that's something 
need to look into in the future. You might wonder about running more than uh, three streetcars. Three is the maximum we can run in O gauge right now because that's all I've got. But uh, we can look at earlier video 831, which is what we're seeing here, where we ran six Bachman N gauge Peter Witt streetcars on the same main line. And the, the big difference is here we were using two detectors. And you can see there's one detector back here. And there's one detector out in the front here. They're positioned about a halfway around the loop from each other. And the, the logic is actually very simple. We run all six of them from one detector to the other. You can see that's the fifth one that just came in. There comes the sixth one, that yellow. And they went past the second the detector. Now they'll start all over and go back to the first detector. And the logic is just to run them past the detector for a certain amount of time. Like, say, maybe 12 seconds for that car, 10 seconds for the yellow one that's coming up. These are This is speeded up 500%, by the way. And then maybe 8 seconds for the third car and so on. We've just used time delay to park them various positions downstream of the detector. Uh, we can't specify distance, but we can specify time past the detector. And the distance is pretty consistent. Once in a while, these cars will bump, but they're running slow. We slow them down, as you can, as you can see. If you watch that car comes in, it slows down. Uh, so if they do bump, it doesn't derail them or anything. Uh, and it, just the big difference here is we need to use two detectors. But this is a way to run more more cars. In this case, it's six. And if you went to multiple detectors, you could probably even run more than that. The documentation for this video, uh, such as drawings, commands, and photos, is on the documentation website, which is at autocontrols.wordpress.com. And look for the documentation for video number 834, which is this O-Gage PCC video. And just by way of reference, uh, the top website is autocontrols.org which has the entry page and the playlist and uh, the trainprogramming.com web page and the midwesttractionhub.com web pages are actually pages on autocontrols.org these two domain names are forwarding domain names forward to autocontrols.org and also relevant is video 835 introduction to O-Gage train programming and also video number 816, which is getting started with the NCE mini panel. That's our programmable model train controller. Video 816 really tries to go into depth and give you a bunch of simple exercises you can work through to get comfortable with using this thing.